Deciding the best approach to use with our clients. We all have a certain way of doing things, a certain ways that we like to coach people. And that's fine, but let's have a little bit of awareness as to why we've chosen that approach. And today I want to give you five points to think about next time you're deciding the best approach to use. So our approaches and our methodologies and the way we deliver information are based upon our previous experiences. And they might have been affected by courses we've been on, workshops, mentors we've had, people we spent time with. And that's great. The goal is to be aware of our opinions and our beliefs and realise there's more than one direction and path to take people. So the first thing I want you to think about is don't be dogmatic in your approach. We all love a certain exact formula. We all love a set way of doing things. It's kind of the way we've been taught to learn. But I think to deliver a really good coaching experience, we should have so many tools to be able to solve a certain amount of problems. So I'll give you an example. If I've got two clients who come and see me, both experiencing similar back pain. One is a bodybuilder and one loves yoga. I might have a certain template as to how I help this person or these people, but the exercises I use and how I prescribe them and how I deliver the information might be slightly tweaked. It might look slightly differently person to person. So I have learned to be open-minded and learn that actually there's more than one way I could solve a certain problem and back pain's just been an example of the problem I'm trying to solve. Number two then, listen to your client. Your approach should be based upon the information you gather from them and experiences they've had in the past and beliefs that they've got. You can guide and you can educate, but try to avoid becoming too much of a dictator in their life and becoming too rigid and saying, well, you should do this, you should do that, because that can lead to quite negative results long term. So I'd encourage you to educate your client. I'd encourage them to guide them through a journey of movement and health. But remember where your role is and try not to become this kind of dictator if you can avoid that. Number three then, don't just listen to one person. So what I'm talking about now is kind of people who are giving you guys information, who are educating you guys on how to run your business and how to be a successful trainer. Understand there's loads of ways to do it. So don't become fixed minded and follow one person Look at a multitude of different approaches, a multitude of different opinions and beliefs, and then form your own approach and your own belief. That takes me on to number four. Have some appreciation of evidence. Also have some appreciation of your own anecdotal experience. And the goal is to try and combine the two to be able to decide the best approach. So I tend to see quite extreme sometimes where some people don't even realize evidence exists. And some people who have Lots of evidence just haven't worked in the trenches, haven't worked with enough people. So really what you want to try and do is mould the two, where you've got experience, you've worked with people, you've got your own anecdotal evidence, and you combine that with sort of research papers and evidence, and then you can really deliver a high-end coaching experience. Number five then, always reassess. Your approach you decided to use a couple of years ago might look totally different now. And that's great, that shows that you're evolving. So I'm not saying your whole coaching uh, service that you offer is going to be totally uplifted and changed. What you'll probably find is you just slightly tweak it. You've understood a little bit more research, you've been in a few extra courses, and you can tweak it and reassess. The goal is to always be very self-aware of your own beliefs. And something I get people to think a lot about is to realise that we all have a bias. We all have a certain way of doing things, a certain way that we like, and that's fine. And we will find evidence to support it. We're very good at finding evidence to support our own opinions. Again, it's just being aware of it. And a really good quote I like to use is one from Aristotle. And he said, it is the mark of an educated mind to entertain a thought and not necessarily accept it. So I would urge everyone watching this video right now to entertain as many different thoughts as possible and then decide the best approach that you're going to use when working with your clients.